guys. Bye bye. Welcome back to Ispan Musa TV. Alright, rock and roll to the world. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you are with Ismail Musa TV. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So today I shall continue with data collection and presentation. Okay, that will be our topic for today. So uh, when we talk of data data collection, that is gathering of data. After you gather your data, you now sort out your data, and the next step is you have to present your data. And there are three methods that you can use in data presentation. Data can be presented in the following forms. The first one is textual method. So in textual method, in here, you are to describe, you are to provide description of the data gathered. It is a way of giving meaningful statements, meaningful findings about your data. So you can use sentence and these sentences are to put into paragraph forms. Okay, so that is textual method. The second is you can have tabular method or they say tabular form. So this is a systematic arrangement of information into columns and rows. We will look into that uh, with our frequency distribution. Next, we have graphical method or form. In here, we are to utilize pictures or diagrams or graphs. No? So hopefully uh, in our future lessons or in the next video, we will be making video, uh, we will be making graphs using some available software or hopefully if we have still time no uh, graphical method so this is a one one data presentation where as i said no you have to describe your data using graphs or diagram okay now let's talk about tabular form of data presentation uh, in statistical tables class a, there must be the column, uh, you have column and rows for a table, but you have to provide what we call table heading. In table heading, this includes the table number and the title of the table. Take note, you have to be consistent in your table number. If you use uh, Arabic numeral, 1, 2, 3, a whole number, then it should be in series. Okay? And if you started with some decimals, uh, let's say 1, 1, 1.1, 1.2, it should also be in series. Okay? So, title of the table. So, what what does the, the content of the table or the content or the body? So, the title of the table speak about the content of the body. So, then it must be related, no? So, let's, let, let's talk about the body. The body is the main part of the table that contains the information or the figures. Then another part is the tabs or classes. This is usually the first column in your table. In your table, no, the first column in the statistical uh, table is tabs or classes. So in here, uh, you may use either categorical or numerical data. So we have no. Uh, usually, as I said, no, this is always found at the left side, most no left side left most side of the table then we also it, it's always always uh, a practice to have caption uh, for each uh, column no? a caption is a designation or, or identifications of the information contained in a column usually found at the top of the most column no? the top most of the column this is where you place your caption okay now this is an example class hmm. you see you have table number, then you have the title. So, frequency distribution of staff perception of the leadership behavior of the administrator. So, the content will be about the perception of the leadership behavior. And it's a frequency only. So, you have there the frequency and the 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 caption is perception of leadership behavior. So that is the characteristics that you are interested to present. Okay. So you have there the caption. 
the stubs or the classes, then you have the body. Okay? So it's clear. Next. Uh, next class is we also wish to present our data using graphs. No? A graph or a chart is a device for showing numerical values or relationship in a pictorial form. And there are advantages why why many are would like to have graphs as part of their data presentation. So the main features and implications of a body of data can be seen at once. While the table can present uh, numerical data as expressly as possible, but a graphs can also be can can portray no the data and it can be seen at once. Okay. So People also love to see graphs, no? So they can attract attention and hold the reader's interest. Number three, simplifies concept that would otherwise have been expressed in so many words. No? And four, can readily clarify data frequently by bringing out hidden facts and relationship. So while while table can present uh, expressly the numerical part, but with with a graph. You can portray whether there is relationship between variables, okay? Or if there are some trends on the data. So, qualities of a good graph. So, first, it is accurate. You know? A good graph should not be deceptive. It should not be distorted, misleading, or in any way susceptible to wrong interpretation as a result of inaccurate or careless construction. Usually, when we construct uh, a bar graph, make it sure that your your y-axis should always st start with zero. Don't immediately start it with the next line because don't don't hide some information. Okay. Number two, it is clear. No, it is clear. An effective graph can be easily read and understood. The graph should focus on the message it is trying to communicate. No, the graph must be able to aid the reader in the interpretation of facts. Simple. No? That's another quality of a good graph. The basic design of a statistical graph should be simple, straightforward, not loaded with irrelevant or trivial symbols and ornamentation. There should be no distracting elements in a chart that inhibit effective visual communication. Okay, so uh, do not add more additional uh, flowering design. What is a graph should be straightforward. No, with number four, it has a good appearance. Okay, so it should be properly designed. No, there must be no distortion in drawing. Okay, so a good graph is one that is designed and constructed to attract or catch attention by holding a neat, dignified, and professional appearance. Okay, so these are the different types of graph you know, that we can utilize for our statistical presentation of data. So, as you notice, for each graph, there are required nature of variable and what is the function. So, the first is the bar graph. A bar graph can be horizontal or vertical. Uh, it is effective if the nature of your variable is discrete. Now, the function is for multiple responses or overlapping categories. So, we use bar graph. Okay. So, line chart. So, you use line chart. First requirement is your the nature of your variable must be discrete, and you want to show a trend over a period of time. Pie chart or circle graph. No? So if you want to show immediately the figure, or the frequency, no? what part of the whole. So and if your data is categorical, so pie, pie or circle graph is effective. It showed the component parts of a whole for mutually exclusive categories. So the requirement is it must also be mutually exclusive categories. No? Uh, like gender, so male, female. So one person can only be belong to a male or a female gender. So <laughs> we don't expect 
eh, one data can be categorized as both male and female, okay? So, next is pictograph. Yeah, sometimes we use pictograph. Uh, these are actually pictures that express information or data. No? So, the nature of the variable must be continuous or it can also be discrete. Uh, this show more vivid picture of the data. Then, we have scatter point diagram. The requirement here, it must be continuous. No? That, that the nature of the variable must be continuous. To show roughly if relationship exists between two variables. Okay? So, we want to see the relationship of variable A with variable B. Or does, does your amount of money influence your, your energy in attendance, <laughs> you want to see that relationship, uh, how how intent how how active you are in attending classes, and versus the the, the amount of money your parents give you per day, and you you come up with a a a thirty days uh, observation. So you want to show relationship if relationship exists between two variables that scattered diagram can help you out. Okay. So this is an example of a historical or uh, horizontal rather bar graph, no? Horizontal bar graph. So as you notice, uh, we have on the x on the x axis are the number of students or the frequencies and the y axis are your categories, no? Yes, you can use bar graph for that purpose. So we have jazz, rock, classical, hip hop. Uh, as you notice, the number of students, uh, the frequencies are are with properly in on an interval. No, the, the interval is really equivalent. No? The distance are equal. One, two, three. The difference is one. Okay. Then we have category. You you, you see class. You can immediately this determine which one are frequently uh, what are the favorites no of the type of music among the respondents of students you can easily look oh of course it's just the highest then you can use vertical graph okay vertical graph so you notice the the graph are uh, in vertical form so daily temperature no? monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday so you can you can also hold have that the x axis and the y axis the 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 measurement okay <coughs> when you make a vertical graph so your categories are on the x axis while on the y axis are your frequencies or the measure this is what i'm telling you the line chart uh, you have the x and y axis and if you want to show the trend no changes along time so example this is a philippines population based on u.s census bureau international database so we can really see how how the population increases as time goes on so 1950 1960 1970 and even as predicted up to 2050 <laughs> Uh, today is already 2022, so it's the gra the the prediction is almost accurate. Uh, 2022, 2020, it's 105 million. No, 105 million. So today is 2022. So more or less here, uh, according to some date statistical data. We already reach 111 million. So if this is 110, 111 is somewhere here. So the graph, the the, the prediction seems to be accurate. Uh, okay, of course this is based on historical data, uh, U.S. Census Bureau International Database. So it started 19 1960s, 1950s. There are only 20 million Filipinos according to 20 million plus. And by 2050, 2050 rather, so we expect about 150 million Filipinos. Ah. Okay, 
So, a line chart, as I said, no, will show fluctuation, no, a trend. So, this is a Philippine peso to US dollar for, for a month of October 25 to November 22. Uh, obtained from www.exchangerates.org. Uh, this is not this year. It's sometimes when it's still uh, that, that equivalent uh, exchanges. So, the the money, you, you see the graph don't, using the light chart, you can re really see the, the change of the heights no? and the fluctuation as the days goes on. Okay, so you have here your, uh, this is your categories. So, meaning the every day, October 27, October 29, October 31, November 1, November 3. By two days, no? November 5, November 7, November 9, and until November 22. Then it started, uh, this is what I'm trying to say, but un unless, at least provided otherwise, so we know already it's 43. Uh, 43. But if it is bar graph, don't do this. It must be, you always begin with zero. But for line chart, it's okay. For, at least it is provided 43. Then we just, we are just interested on the, the fluctuation man on the change of height okay this is a pie chart or pie graph uh, as you notice uh, World War two military deaths no? I, I think this is a data it may not be that accurate uh, and this is just for purpose an example so we want to see at at once no you see at once you will determine that uh, the debt in Germany is is high than other participating world in World War Two who participated in World War Two. Germany sixty four percent of the debts accrued to, and Japan twenty four percent. Immediately you can see which one is the highest and which one is the lowest. No, of course Bulgaria less than point three percent. So that's a pie chart. Next, we have the pictograph. So a pictograph, you can use the picture. So of course, uh, this is the, you have to come up with a legend. So one whole apple means 10 apples. The half means 5 apples. So you, you can see immediately, ah, golden delicious, there are only 25. So this is varieties of apple in a food store. This is an example of a scatter point diagram. Yeah, a scatter point diagram, since we really want to, to show the relationship between two variables, uh, how does it increase? As much as possible, you always begin with zero. Huh? So you, this is your y axis and you have your x axis. Okay. So as you notice, uh, they are properly, the interval is the same. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So, difference of 10. So, with the English mark, also difference of 10. So, you can really see, no? uh, the, the, then you plot the score. Those who got 20, uh, the first person got 20, so 30. Another person got 30, his score is 40. Okay? And then, those who get somewhat like 48, get 40 in the English mark. Then, you want, the trend will really show that seemingly, if this is straight line, that's a perfect relationship. But still, uh, if you connect the dots, that's still showing some relationship between uh, English mark and math marks. Okay? Another example is this is also a scatter diagram. No? The GDP per capita in thousands as well as expenditure per student in thousands. You will really notice that uh, countries with higher GDP, what we expect is they also have higher expenditure per student. Okay? So, you, well, well, if you have some money, you can spend for your people. So, there is a relationship. Okay. Okay. Thank you, class. That is for uh, data collection and presentation.